So today we are going to make a round broom. And we are going to use uh, what I call a cat paw handle. It's just a piece of harvested wood that I've cleaned up and I've also thinned down on the bottom. And we are going to, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay it on the ground and see how it lays. Because remember we said we want it to lay flat on the, uh, on the wall. So, even though I'd like to have that cat paw shown in the front, the way it lays, the hole needs to go in here. So, you can mark that or just keep your finger there. Works just as well. And I am going to drill a hole in there for my hanger. So now, once I've got that hole drilled in, I know where to put my uh, broom nail. So here's where the hole goes in, which means then the nail goes perpendicular to that. So I am going to use four fingers and say that's going to go about right there. Tap that in. Remember you don't want it to go, you don't want it to be flush. You want it to be up just a little bit there. Okay. So now what I want to do is make sure that I have all the broom horn that I'm going to need. Oh, sorry. The first thing I need is my, remember we talked about this. You got to have some jerk strings. I've already made three of them. They're st on standby waiting for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my broom horn and kind of sort through this here. I've got it all wet. It's been soaking for about, eh, about a half an hour. So I want my long pretties in one towel and my my uh, short kind of fatties in the other one. That's a nice long looking one there. So my long ones are going to go on the outside and the short ones are going to go on the inside. And I'm not quite sure, that's a little thick, even though it's short, how many I'm going to need at this point. It depends on the diameter of your handle. A lot of it does. So those are kind of my pretties over there. So I'm going to put them off to the side and I'm going to use these shorter ones just to start off here. So I'm going to get my spindle ready. Make sure that it's coming off the top and not from underneath. And we talked about this not to start off. It's just an overhand. And then you want it to slip knot, but we want it to slip on the short, uh, this short part of the string here, and not the long one. So I've got a loop that's over the top. I'm going to turn this loop upside down, go through the center of the hoop, grab the long piece of the string, and that should do it. <clears throat> okay, so I always want my broom corn underneath the table, and I am right handed and my right hand is away from the table where I want it to be. So I'm going to tighten this up. See how that shortens up on the short string, not the long one. And then I'm going to wrap this about three times. One more time. A little bit. Okay, so I'm going to start layering these guys in with the short uglies. And because I'm not going to weave with these, it doesn't matter if I put in an odd amount to start, and it doesn't matter if it's an odd or even amount on the bottom, because that's not what I'm going to braid with. So, my feet on my spindle, I am going to crease that a little bit, and I am going to bring this up a little bit so you can... So I've got two and I creased it. I'm going to put a couple more in. And like I said, 
especially when you're using harvested handles. You never really know how many it's going to take because every diameter is a little bit different. Two more in here. Okay. When I place them, I don't want them right next to that connection between the hurl and the neural. I want it up just a little bit. Okay. And now I am going to wrap for about three rows. So this is a layered broom. If I stopped right there, that would be a really thick handled cobweb room, but that's not what we're doing. So we're going to go for another layer. And once again, you can put them in in twos if you want, you don't have to, because we're going to go around again. So you want them in there tight, but not so tight that um, you know you don't want a whole bunch of bulk. I guess is what I want to say. So two in and give it a crease. Give us that one there. Another couple. And you can see as you're getting, of course, bigger brooms. We're going to take up more material. So I'm going to put another couple in here. And I think I can do about one more here. Okay. So once again, see how it's getting thicker? And the thicker it gets, of course, it helps to have bigger hands, the harder it is to manage. Okay. So. We're going to go around this one more time. There's my three. Now, here's something new we're going to do. We're going to thin these down to kind of make a pineapple shape. You want to take your knife away from you. And we're going to trim this up. And then we're going to put one last layer over the top with those pretties that we had. And then we'll start that bread. So, think how cool it would be for your grandkids or your kids or whomever this uh, fall when it's time for Halloween to have their own handmade broom by you. How cool is that? So, I've gone back to the beginning point again. Okay? I've got all this trimmed down. So, now I'm going to put my pretties in. Now, this time, I am going to start with one just because it's easier for me. And then I'll add in twos, and that guarantees me that I have an odd amount. An odd amount is what I want so that I can have a continuous weave. So set them in there and crease them down. Go that spin a little bit. And I want the thinnest ones that I can get. And the longest of the knurl, just because it makes for a longer, prettier braid. So I'm not looking at the hurl, or the actual broom part of it. I'm looking at the knurl, because that's what I'm going to be braiding. You see that it's definitely getting Thicker. Okay. And I think that's, I think we're going to call that good. I'm going to move this over a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to wrap for three. Get that nice and tight. And as you can see, it's 
a lot bigger broom to contend with. I thought it would be easier with a hazelnut apron on, but I might have been wrong. You're going to get a wet leg regardless, so I guess it doesn't make any difference if you wear one or not. Okay, so this is my third wrap. I'm going to finish that around, and then I'm going to start the braid. So there's nothing different between this one and a cobweb, except, of course, you got more mass and more up and down. Okay, still bring that finger over. Remember that you want to rotate it down, bring that finger over, and then do a crease. Rotate it down, bring that over, and this is over and under, so every other one is what you're going to do this to. And if we have put in an odd amount and we have it messed up, then it will be a continuous weave. So I am going to do a couple rows just so you can see what I'm doing. And then, so I don't have to bore you through the entire process here. When I get to the point that I am going to um, use my jerk string and finish it off, I'll come back and show it to you. Because this is pretty much more the same. Uh, you know what? I'll do three rows and show you. You can see how I'm starting to get that. It just looks like sweet corn look in that braid. And to get that tight braid, there's only one way you get it, and that's by taking that finger and pulling it over and creasing it. Okay. And this braid is going to be as long as my shortest piece of broom corn. Alright, so you can see what's going on here. And I will spare you the boredom of watching the whole braid process. And I'll pick you back up when I'm ready to finish. Okay, so I got my braid all done and I'm going to do my jerk string. So I want to make sure that I place the jerk string not to the right because I'm right handed and that's what I'm going to pull. Okay, so I'm going to wrap around this about three times. And I want the string next to it, not on top of it. You do this three or four times, it's totally up to you. But I would definitely do three. Making sure that you're keeping your jerk string flat. I'm going to go one more. Okay. So now, here's my knot. I've got my thumb using it as a break down here so I don't lose my tension. I'm going to take my X-Acto, or you can take scissors, and I'm going to cut that. And then I'm going to change out my thumb because I want to take this string that was tied to the spindle and I want to put it through the loop. Okay, through the loop. So I've still got my pressure here so I haven't lost my tension. Then I'm going to come over here to the knot side of the jerk string and pull it through. And then because I just want to make sure that it's nice and tight, I'm going to wrap it around something, it doesn't matter what, I'll just use my X-Acto and then trim it off. So then, once again, I'm going to use the butt end of my broom spindle and I'm going to trim this off. So usually if you apply pressure and then pull it back, comes off there pretty nice. So this guy gets sewn just like the cobweb broom. And I'll show you that in the next video. So usually what you do is after you tie these on, hang them up and let them dry, and then you sew them the next day. You don't have to. That's usually what happens. And you can imagine that that's a lot of wet. But see how that's kind of um, pineapple shaped, kind of bigger on the bottom, thinner up on the top. Now, if I could have gone up farther with this, you'd see more of that. But that was all in the cards for that. So. 
<coughs> this is a, a round room, remember, and it's not going to get flattened out. It's going to be round like this and then tied down. So it's got that very cool cat paw handle. I mean, there's all sorts of wonderful sticks that are waiting for you in the woods to become brooms. Okay. And then when I get this all done, I'll tie it up. And then it, it, it's really kind of nice to put some varnish on your handle and then on your braid as well. You varnish it, it's never coming apart. So, actually, I've never seen anything that I tied come apart either. So, round broom together, and you want to take about, you know, about three yards. I would rather see that you have uh, too much string that you're going to use to sew that with versus not enough. So um, three is kind of a good round figure there. So I'm going to make one big loop. See, I've got my ends here with me. Here's my ends. All right, so I'm going to come down here to the loop end. And I am going to put my thumb and forefinger in the loop. I'm going to spread them out as far as I can. Actually, let's do it this way. Put your thumb and forefinger up through the loop. Turn them down. And then put your finger and thumb together. And you have a double loop. Let's try it again. Put your thumb and finger through the loop. Through the loop. Turn them down to the floor. Put them together, and you have a double loop. All right. So, I'm going to take that double loop. Remember, we got four fingers here before I hit that wood. Don't want to hit that wood while I'm sewing it, so I'm going to make sure that I'm down at least four fingers on this first row. And I would do two or three rows on this. So I'm going to go around once. I'm going to go around twice. And I'm going to feed it through that double loop. And then I'm going to cinch it up. Okay. To about right there. So, I'm going to grab my broom needle. The illustrious broom needle. I'm going to go back to that open end. The two open ends. Okay. Now, it's easier for me just to bend that over and thread it. Too many years as a seamstress, I'm sure. Okay, but if you want to just thread it through, you probably can. Okay, so what I like to do is just make a straight stitch first. Straight stitch over the top, okay? And then I'll take about a fourth of an inch. To my next stitch, diag length underneath it. And tighten that up. Make sure you tighten up both. And there we go. So I'm going to do this all the way around with a straight stitch. Some people do it so that it is at a diagonal and then come back and do a cross stitch. You can do that too. That's the thing about brooms, there's no one right way. And so we're going to go all the way around. And then we're going to finish it just like we did on cobweb room. Okay, and I would definitely do two to three rows on this guy. So, stitch over the top and then diagonally it through to the next stitch. And I won't bore you with this whole process. Once again, I'll get it done and then I'll show you how to finish it. Okay, I've got it stitched all the way around. So what I want to do is come through the center and pull it tight. And it doesn't hurt to go do it again, I think. And then um, pull it tight. Okay. Kind of squunches that down a little bit. I'm gonna pull that up just a little bit. So then I'm going to do like two more rows of this. And don't forget that at the bottom, you want to trim this guy up. So, let me show you about giving it a haircut. Depending on how wild and woolly you want it to look. Like, 
take your scissors, trim it up how you want it to look like. Maybe you need some more uh, jet fuel on it, so you don't want so much drag. But trim off the bottom of your broom, however you want it to. So I'll have um, two more rows of this, and then this guy is done and ready to hang on the wall, clean out my corners, or if I'm lucky, Hey, it's Jill. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and like our videos and subscribe. That way you're always updated on anything basket related that we have on our Jill Shote Basketry channel. You won't miss a thing. Please like us and subscribe. See you next time.